Yeah, yeah, what it is, people, it's your boy Doggy Diamonds, another episode of Doggy Diamonds, No Filter. I don't bring people back on No Filter more than once, more than twice, more than three times. I don't even interview people more than twice. Once I interview you, that's pretty much done unless you got a follow-up album, unless you got something else that you're doing. I might bring you back, but you rarely see me interview people once or twice. But this man on the line, I probably interviewed like five times because I like him. He's a cool dude, good dude, can't say nothing bad about him. I got Shabazz Disciple on the line right now. What's going on, bro? Shalom, man. What up, doggy? Chill like every time, man. man. Yeah. Thanks for letting me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Share the platform with you, brother. Yeah, I want to say nothing about that, man. I gotta um, I want to do something and uh, say something about your 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 persona, your character, your aura. When did I meet you? Was it two thousand and eight? Yeah, I think it was about oh eight. We was we did when I met you. Mm-hmm. We was doing we was doing an interview, Dog Angels with Ayatollah. Uh, you came to Red Hook. We was in a studio by the train station, Smith and Ninth Street. Facts. And then we did the interview outside under the train station on Second Ave, like right behind the half mall. Yes. Like like Smith and Ninth Street train station. Word. So so what I want to say to the people was that reason why I've stayed in contact with you for all these years, and um corresponded with you and 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 had you on my platform a few times because since I've known you. So we say 08, so to the people that's, you know, that's 12 years ago. Since I've known you for 12 what? years, I've n- I can't say one bad thing about you. You've never rubbed me the wrong way. You never did anything that was unloyal, disloyal, shaky, sideways to me. Anytime that I've called you for anything, you kind of made it happen for me on the spot. You was like, oh, I make that call right now. So And, I, and I'll get back. Yeah, so for for me, um, that's one of the reasons why I still correspond with you, you know, just on the record, off the record, and, you know, via social media, and just, you know, shoot you a text, and vice versa every now and again. So some people wonder why I don't have a close relationship with some people that I used to have, or they think I should have. This is why I have a relationship with this man on the phone, because he's always been more than stand up with me. So it's just like, um, I don't, I'm not used to that. I'm used to people using and abusing. And then when you ain't useful, you're useless that you don't hear from them no more. And this, this man has never called me and asked me for nothing, you know, but, um, well, even just ask, do I need anything or, you know, so I just really, really wanted to speak up for the guy that I know and, and, um, you know, just give the people some insight on, you as a man, you know, and um, I, I, you've always been, you know, stand up with me, you know what I'm saying? So I think that that's very, right. very important because I don't mess with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. there's a lot of dudes. And I that, respect, yeah. I respect you 144% because you know me. Yeah. Mono be mono. Yeah. And everybody around, well, I don't, I'm on five passports. I've been around the whole planet a couple of times, right? Mm-hmm. I meet millions of people. Mm-hmm. Ask him. Yeah. Yo, what's up with Baz? What? Yo, he helped me. Y'all remember he did. Yo, it's nothing but help, help, help. Looking out, made that happen. Plug that in. Did this. Did that. The the manager of Bone Thugs and Harmony. Her name is Miss Marie, mm-hmm. right? They from San Diego. Her man, her husband, Mister Mike, right? When we was out there in L.A. in like 2011, boom. I got invited to the, the to the Bone Dog Studio with B- 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 um, Crazy Bone is my man. Wow! So we in the studio and I meet Miss Miss Lee Miss Marie, their manager. Oh, how you doing? She's like, you know what's crazy? She said my husband loves you. Wow. He loves you. I said, I said, who's your husband? She said Mike. I said, hold up, Mike. That's your husband? I knew who she was talking about from the group in San Diego. Now, how I met Mike. We had a grave digging show. We was in San Francisco. Then we got on the bridge and went to Oakland, right over the bridge, right there. Bomb. So we doing the show, and these little kids, this, this, these younger group, they couldn't get on. The, the, the promoters, like, dissed them. Like, they couldn't, they didn't have no time. 
they didn't have no more time to for that group. They had to have the grave diggers on right now. So, you know, you know me. I'm like, yo, I'll take off one of my songs and let them get five minutes out of my time. Mm-hmm. Yo, they got on, killed it. They had a radio station. I met him again. He, he remembered me, beat me up on the radio show, and then I met his wife, and they, they managing this Bone Thugs and Hardy. Wow. You see? Good follow good. My Uncle Ross always said, I was a kid for all my life. Bosh, good follow good. So mm-hmm. the people who really know me, that's all they can say is good, man. Like, I just try to do good, man. I love helping, you know what I'm saying? And that's it. That's what I do. And for you to 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 say it from just your experience, mano y mano, and not get twisted by other people's personas and you know, their 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 ways of describing bads when they know exactly what you just said. That's the bads is one bads, man. One face. Yo, I, one bads, man. But I could say like Come, you're like the way you're in a fast way right now. <laughs> like I could say You know like, what I mean? Like I could say like, you know, it's times where, you know, um I had tried to get you to get me in contact with somebody and you like literally didn't say I get back to you next week. I hit you tomorrow. Like you, nah, man, I'm calling him right now, man. Right now, it's now. Right I'm now. getting that. Let's go. Let's get I set that up right now. Facts. Right now. Yep. On the spot. Yep. That's how I do, man. When I'm, I'm about building. You know what I'm saying? Uh, helping brothers because I'm not used to that. I didn't see. You know what I'm saying? Like my whole thing when in the '80s. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. So mm-hmm. I was tired of carrying caskets. I'm tired of fucking burying, excuse my language, yeah, I'm yeah, tired, yeah. man. Like, mm-hmm. you get tired. I'm young, but I'm, 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 I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired every week, two funerals, carrying caskets, tears on my suit. I'm tired. So I was like, you know what? I want another way out for us, man. Mm-hmm. I, I, I got to do something else. This ain't it. Like, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a trap and all of that, how they put it there and step back. I didn't know all that much knowledge yet. But I knew something wasn't right. Because I was leaving a lot of horror behind. You know what I'm saying? That's why when I rhyme, I don't glorify it. I horrify it. Mm. You understand? So I'm like, damn. I'm trying to bury in my brothers. I'm trying to lose in everybody. This ain't the way out. I, I, I see this ain't the right way. So I'm trying to find another way out. And I told Klein and all of them. I'm like, yo, I, I, got, I wanted a better way out for us, man. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing demos. I start making demos with my man, um, um, my man Snuff. My man, stuff, my bad, stuff, stuff, you know what I'm saying? We start making demo tapes, boom. So I used to always go to Klein because he was the most famous dude at the time. He, everybody knew him. He used to have Piss Marky, all of the niggas on my block. Mm-hmm. So I was like, he know all of those dudes I need to meet to help me get to the next level with the music. But that wasn't his thing. Like he, like he explained in the other interview with you. So he brought me to the radio. First of all, he believed in me. And then he took me to the radio. He had confidence in me. He took me to the radio. And that's what sparked it right there. That's when I knew I could do it. And I, st- I had something. I was on to something. So I kept building on it, building on it. To this day, I'm still building on it. But I'm saying, at that time, I was building on it. And I was on a mission to, 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 to get it to the level where I could get all of them niggas to change their mind about what they was doing. Because I was tired of losing everybody. So I was trying to help. That's it. That's all I know how to do, man. It's just help. So, so um, within within your help, um, right now, you, you know, it's it's an elephant in the room, and it's something out there that I don't see you address, but it's a real bad stain on your name. Um, that every time uh-huh. your name is brought up in a situation, it's always something yeah. negative, like uh, you cause somebody's ailment and somebody's uh sickness. Uh, how? And, yeah, so I want I want I want to give you the floor because you know why why don't first of all why have you never spoken up for yourself why have you just stayed quiet? Silence is golden. Number one, when when they brought Jesus, y'all call him Jesus. When they brought him in the courtroom and they accused him of all these things, what did he do? When he knew he was innocent, what he did? He remained silent, man. He remains silent. You know why? Because I'm a strong, faithful man, and I know my Heavenly Father's going to bring the light on all of that. Mm. Because if I respond and I go get all into that, listen, first of all, we got too many things on this earth to worry about. Mm. I'm not being selfish and just thinking about myself. 
I ain't trying. You, you, you go on my Facebook page. Mm-hmm. You don't see me slandering and going at him. Mm-hmm. I just try to edify y'all and bring him up. I just try to help seal the elect. Because right now, all these problems we're facing, I know the answers. they all in the scriptures. That's why I just keep hitting y'all with the scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. Because I'm trying to give y'all comfort and understanding of what's going on and why. Mm. I got bigger things to worry about than my own problems. What if so-called Jesus is selfish, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck them niggas. I ain't getting on that cross. Fuck them niggas. Mm-hmm. I ain't getting on the cross for them. What will we, will, will we have a chance right now? The elect he got on the cross for? Will we have a chance right now? Mm. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying. He wasn't selfish. It wasn't just about him individually. Me, me, I, I. I was never like that. The reason why I never responded, because I was given ways of time to heal. That is not my dude. I don't know who this guy is. Mm. This new dude. I don't know him. You understand? Mm. The last time that I was with my brother, my little brother, who I always wanted the best for, you know what I'm saying? And I made sure, I told him, if I get in, I got y'all. I got you. And I did everything I said I was going to do. I'm a man of my word. And you know that. You just confirmed that in the top of the conversation. Mm-hmm. That I'm a, If I say I'm going to call somebody, I'm on it right now. Like, not no tomorrow. I'm going to do it right now. So when I'm at RZA, when freestyle, my cousin, my story don't change. Just Google me, man. My story never changes. Freestyle from the arsonist, my cousin, who was down with um, Flipper, the dancer, the translator crew was his other group he was managing, which you know as the Fuji's. Mm. Freestyle was going to be the fourth member of the Fuji's, but some, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know how that went out, how that didn't happen. But Flipper was shopping him at, at some producers' houses that he knew to get his demos, you know, get his demo game up. One of the houses he went to in Staten Island was Prince Joaquin. He played these songs. He had a demo, a reggae demo. Which was like, nah, I don't really know what to do with reggae. She's like, I got somebody you're going to love. He put my tape in. He said, Beck, Ray, all of them came out the room. Yo, who that? Yo, who that? Yo, the guy is, yo, who's that? And Wizard was like, yo, 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 that's your cousin. He's like, yo, yo, you won't. He said to my cousin, would you get mad if I put your cousin out first? You know what Freestyle said? No. Because you, he's going to take me everywhere he go anyway. Mm. You think about what I just said. Mm. First of all, his loyalty is on Pluto for even playing my demo. Because I don't know nobody else in my crew, Mad Mob at the time, who would have played my demo after Rizzo turned them down. Mm. Because there ain't, ain't, ain't nobody as, as honest and loyal as him. I see that now. But you know what? I did what I did. All I wanted was the best and help. So, if it wasn't good enough, oh well. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing about that. But I'm going to tell you this. I will tell you this. Mm-hmm. I heard a couple of things that I have to clean up real quick. Go ahead. One. One thing that he said, Razor said, Hell Razor said, I caused his aneurysm because he was at work and he got a phone call from somebody Guys, just in the studio with Grave Diggers right now. And he dropped. Now, let's rewind the movie, okay? April 4th, Sunday, Easter Sunday, we finished the Dog Angel second album. We started crying. When we finished, I brought the red wine, I brought the, the bitter herbs, and I brought the um, unleavened bread to the studio that night. Because it was a beautiful honor for me to kick Easter Sunday in the ass from what it did to me as a kid on the F train. Mm-hmm. Y'all know that story. So it was finally the first time in my life, and I got goosebumps right now, that I, and I told Razor this, it's the first time I could ever do something positive to erase that negative stain that I carried all of my life with Easter Sunday. Mm-hmm. Finally, I'm doing something beautiful, finishing the album, with my brother and doing what I said I wanted to do for Red Hook from the beginning. When we met Rizzo, we didn't get to get to continue our Red Hook stuff. So that's why, I, that's where you get the engagement. That's why I was willing to do that. Because we was just getting back to finish what we started from Red Hook. That's it. Okay? So now, when we finish My Other Wing, I just need y'all to listen to that song. Go listen to Other Wing. Remember, the Razor started sh- slandering me on Twitter in the beginning. I didn't know he was doing all of that. Niggas was calling me 
to tell me. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I wasn't expecting that. I was just worried about my man being alive. Like I told Rizzo after I left the hospital. <laughs> so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking. We finished the song. Razor finished his verse. He starts crying. I start crying. We crying like somebody died. We didn't understand why we was crying. It was the most spiritual moment in my hip hop career. In my career. We standing there crying. Lee Glover was there. He came in the room looking at the kids crying. We just started crying. I don't know why. Two day, the next day, because that same day, Rizzo called me. He called me for two weeks. I said, yo, Rizzo, Rizzo, you could just ask Rizzo. Anybody want to know anything, ask Rizzo. If I'm lying, ask Rizzo. That's what you got to do. I told Rizzo, hold up, me and Rizzo got two more sessions. I don't want to just abandon Thug Angels and just and jump into Grave Diggers. Hold tight. He's like, no, nah, no doubt. I'm out here now. I'm doing the film festival. I'm going to go to Philly. I'll be back. He said, let me know. I said, yeah, tonight is the last session. The, the week before that, I said, we got one more next week. Then I'm good. He said, yeah, all right, cool. I'm going to do the film festival next week, and then I'll be back at the crib in the mansion in Jersey on, on Monday night. So hit me up when you're done. That was that. Raise a new. I said, damn, I ain't seen Rizzo in 15 years. Damn. I, I got to go fill this out, see if this, 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 this great biggest thing is going to work still. You know, we on the same page. I told him, I said, yo, let me just fill it out. I'll get you on the album later, but I'm a big up Doug Angels on the album. Now, now let me fast forward. We finished the song. We start crying. The next day, Razor calls me on the three-way at night, one o'clock in the morning, with Timbo on the phone. Call Timbo. I have Timbo. Yo, guys, yo, 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 guys, um, Timbo want to go with you. He want to ride with you to Wizard Quit. He want to ride with you tomorrow. I was like, all right, bet. So give me, into, let me get, yo, know, Timbo, let me, but before we could get the, the number exchange, where is this phone dot? Now, mind you, it's 1.15 in the morning. Razor lives in Pennsylvania. He had to come all, he had to get on a 5 o'clock bus to come all the way to Manhattan to go to work. Hmm. So I was like, let me just leave him alone. I ain't going to call him back and keep, keep going the phone up. He died. Fuck it. I'll get him in the morning because I had my kids. My two children from Connecticut, I had them with me. I was bringing them home that next day. So when I was calling Razor that next day, I'm like, yo, trying to get in touch with him to get Timbo's number so I could see where Timbo's going to be at. When I'm on my way back from Connecticut, I could go either the, the Brooklyn route or I could go the Manhattan route if he's in Times Square bubbling his CDs. That's all I was trying to call for. 4.30 in the afternoon, his brother, Trey Bob, picks up the phone finally and was telling me he was in a coma. He don't know if he's going to make it. Me and my kids collapsed and started crying right there. He was like, Daddy, your other wing, you, 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 you hell razor. Come on, man. I, I was done, bro. Nobody never gave me a moment to, to mourn losing my brother, my little brother. I used to drop jewels on him every day. Him, Marlon, and Seven had them meet me in Coffee Park. You know what I'm saying? I'm the older nigga. I'm building with them. Building with them. Trying to get their mind right. I'm from this right up shit. Don't get caught up in the shit that you see your niggas doing. All this shootout shit and all this drug shit. That, yo, <clears throat> I've been a brother ever since, man. And I, and I made my, I made my, I told him what I was going to do. I did it. I brought him the wizard. I got him on five rock angels. 15, 16 years old, bro. Me and Killer Priest was on diary. Every label in the world wanted to sign me. And everybody, Madonna, Sia, Warner Brothers, all they wanted, all of them wanted me. Ask Chris Paul. Hmm. He told me. Everybody wanted me. You understand? So, um, you know, I walked away from a lot of shit, a lot of deals, a lot of, I just walked away because I seen how the business wasn't, you know, it just wasn't resonating with my spirit. Hmm. The business didn't go right with me and Rizzo. So I left. Hmm. But before I left, we and Killer Priest was in the studio, and Atlantic Records had funded it, and we was doing the song, the, the Disciples of Armageddon, DOA. That was our project. Me and him was a group. Homeless Planet. <laughs> listen to that song. That's me and Priest. When you go back and listen to them songs that was bootleg, and caught the first and second testament and all this other shit, those was DOA songs. That was me and Killer Priest album introducing the Particle and Razor. Hmm. They only own two songs. 
But somebody switched the names around and made it look like it was Sons of Man song. No, it wasn't. That was me and Killer Priest Project. But we both left. I left first. Yo, when I went in, in when, when, when Kev, Kev played my demo for Martin Moore, Martin said, bring him up to the label. I said, he said, he was going to start a label. So Kev brought me up to 28th Street near Firehouse. I'm like, oh, shit. This shit is right in the same block. Right here, we, we always at. We go upstairs, Neil Levine, he has some company where all the labels send him the records. They all um, mail him records and he mail it out to all the DJs. He was like a record pool company, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name of it. But he used to always work for all the labels. He was like, yo, I got Tommy Boy ready to give me a distribution deal. I don't have a name of a label. I definitely want to sign you. I went up there, I freestyled in the office, got the deal. But I told him, no, I need two deals. I got a group, Sons of Men. I still didn't abandon the crew, mm. but you know what? Hey, check now. We ain't going nowhere. I heard about that meeting. It's cool. I wasn't mad. I didn't fucking catch that aneurysm. I just wanted my niggas off the block, not in that situation that we survived because there was little coming up. I didn't want them to go through the same thing. That was it. So now, when it came back around, if, if, if I did something wrong, right? Mm hmm if I do something wrong and you hate my guts this much, right? Why am why are you gonna why when they press play, I'm the first one talking in your in your movie, man? Hmm. Why you came back to do why you came back to me, man, so we could do a group, man? Why? I wouldn't even want to be around you no more, bro. Razor, you already know, man. You know I ain't do nothing wrong, bro. I know what I did wrong though. And it's a scripture that told me what I did. And when I found out that scripture, I was like, Oh, that's what I get. It said, give not to an ungodly man. Hope not a sinner, man. Because you're going to get back twice as wicked as you gave them. Good. So that's the problem. That's what I did wrong. I'm just trying to do You know what I'm saying? You're breaking up. Um, you, you're breaking up right now. Um, I'm trying to figure out why. Say something. I didn't hear you. You're breaking up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking up. up. Yeah, you was breaking, breaking up. Breaking up too. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. We're clear now, though. Go ahead. Hello, you there? Yeah, my bad, dog. Okay, yeah, I don't know what happened. So, um, so, so basically, um, I watched the I watched the documentary. Good doc. It was a good documentary. I didn't even want to see it, doggy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Everybody was calling me. There was a feeling. Mm. They're like, yo, what is this? What is this? Nobody. I'm talking people overseas who know me. I sat at their table. Their mothers fed me. They're like, yo, this is not the bad that I know. I don't understand this. They telling me like, yo, how? You meet all these people around the world, and the only ones that got something negative to say about you are the ones you helped that, that grew up with you. I don't understand y'all people, not y'all people in a racist way, but mm -hmm. I don't understand when people do that. It, it always comes from America. Like, why, why are, why are y'all people like that? The people, your, your people like that. When, what's the last and I ain't even talking, I ain't even talking about, I ain't even talking about Edomites. I'm talking about, like, Africans and Nigerians and Hmm. They're like, yo, why the brothers out there is like that to each other, man? Let me ask you something. What was the last conversation that you had with Razor? The last conversation I had with Razor, I, call, I had Prem call him 2012, right? Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was in L I just came from L.A. I was breaking my neck with the felony fight situation, which I already told him. When I was in Florida, I was talking to him. As soon as he got up the coma, we was in touch, bro. I was in Florida when he got out. We was in touch. Even my man Murdoch, my partner, spoke to him. But then he says, oh, I ain't speak to bad sex. I dropped since the studio session. But they was like, yo, I even spoke to him. Yo, he, yo. I was like, yo, just chill, baby, because he ain't in his right mind. I don't know. But I didn't realize that he was in his right mind. He knows what he's doing, and it's sad. You know what I'm saying? I expected more wisdom and intelligence from Razor. That's not the Razor that I knew, bro. I don't know this new guy, bro. I don't know him. That's why I don't really respond. I don't got nothing to say to him, man. Because you know why? If I try to destroy him, for what? He's, he's, he's the most high. I'm not the most high. You know what I'm saying? I can't give out aneurysms and all that. I'm not the most high. The most high, you, you, you did something that the, the most high didn't agree with. And I already knew your condition was AVM, arterial venous malformation. Okay? I spoke to the doctor. Okay? That's when you're 15 to 45 days old in your mother's womb, 
your veins and arteries in your head start tying up in a knot, right? And then she said, after when you're 20 to 14, I mean, 20 to 40, 14, 20 to 40, when they stop, when they rupture, you have a chance to survive it between the age of 20 and 40. When you're 50, you ain't gonna survive it. Hmm. Okay? Just follow. She said it, it. They said he said it passes through the three generations, every third generation of the males. So you got his father, and you got his two big brothers and him. It passes to the third male. Hmm. Okay? And I, I read every article I can. Me and my wives at that time, we read every article I could find. How to heal and and prevent that second aneurysm. Because they said that one in four million survived the second one. Hmm. So I was digging up every herb. You know, I'm herbed up. I'm, I'm herbs up. I'm trying everything to figure out how to cure everything. Since I lost my pops, I was on a mission. So I found out everything that heals the brain and the, all the brain foods, you know, walnuts. That's why they look like the brain. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, apples, omega-3s, fish, um... It was just blueberries, all of those, ginkgo, all of those are good for the brain. So I told him, he was like, yo, man, I love you, man, thanks, man. I was telling him all the herbs he needed to get. I said, first, you got to get your spirit right. You got to repent with the most high for whatever you did, why he judged you like that. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't kill you, so that's a beautiful thing. There's still mercy on you. You know, you got to repent to the Lord, beg him for mercy, more mercy, and just, you know, make sure you get the herbs. And pray over them and make sure that, because he's the healer. The Most High is the healer. He, he gave you a chance to still live, so he's going to be the one to heal you. But you got to put forth your effort, too. That's all I told him. He's like, yo, I love you, man. Yo, I, yo, yo, I needed to speak to my brother, man. That's all I needed, man. And I'm like, yo, I'm here, bro. And we was building. I said, look, I'm going to break my neck. I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to bust my ass hard, even double time. This is 2011 when y'all saw me put out a video every month. I was on my shit. Every month I put out a video. Every month of that year. Two videos some months. I was I was working overtime and I told him, I'm gonna work overtime and I'm gonna keep our bugs up. As soon as you heal up, I don't know how long it's gonna take, a year, whatever it is. Wherever I'm at, I'm I'm gonna get you on the next flight and you're gonna come back out. But you just gotta heal up first. Because his doctor said in in, in his case all it takes is a year for something, somebody like him to heal up. But he got to do the right things. You know what I'm saying? And it's got to come from the most high. Number one, first and foremost, you got to make it right with him. And then boom, the rest will fall in place. That's all I was, you know, I always wanted the best for my niggas, man. That's all I want, man. You should, come on, man. You you should know that already. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's all I be wanting, bro. Is just, I want to see us win, bro. We taking too many L's out here. Look at us right now. Yeah. Look what we dealing with right now. Yeah. Look at this right now. Yeah. Man, I'm losing brothers every day. Yeah. Every day. Every day. Three a day. No closure. They just throwing them in the body spill in the ground. And in, in wherever they just throw them at. Yeah. Come on, man. No I, I don't want to see that. You got yeah. yeah, no funerals. You got you got you got um trucks, freezer trucks by Utica, you know, rider trucks full of bodies. You got body you know, I seen body bags laying on the floor. But I saw that in the scriptures. Their dead bodies shall lay in the street of the, of, the, of the city spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Ain't this Sodom and Egypt? You got a, it's a Sodomite society, and it's Egypt. You got the pyramid on the back of your dollar. This is uh, Sodom and Egypt, right? Spiritual Sodom and Egypt, right here. Okay? So the scriptures don't lie. I'm, 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 I'm trying to make y'all understand that this is all coming from the most high. Everything. You can't blame somebody for nothing like that. I don't know if you, you know, I don't know if, if somebody's in his ear, you know what I'm saying? Because his wife did tell me when he made us make peace. When I was in Florida, he was like, yo, since we got, well, since we going to get back moving forward, you know what I'm saying? I want you and my, I saw, I heard my girl was going at you on Facebook. And I was like, yeah. And I said, yo, I didn't even go back at her. All I said was, I just going to wait for my other wing to get up. But you got up and you started going at me. He's like, yeah, my bad, man. I wasn't in my right mind. She was like, he was like, she put, he, he put her on the phone. She said, yeah, guys, you know, you would, there were some people that was in his head. She named them. She's like, them is the three people who kept putting his head to go at you. I was like, wow. Right? And then she said, yeah, I was also sitting right there when you, him, and Timbo was on the phone. 
and, and, and the phone cut off. I was sitting right next to him. So I was like, yo, why are you saying you didn't know about Grave Digger? She even asked him. Even Marlon asked him. She told me. Okay? So I don't know why he's still running with this. He didn't know about Grave Diggers. It's cool. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're doing. But it's not good, man. The, the judgment is not going to be good for that, bro. Let me you ask know you the something. truth. Baz, you, why, why nobody else spoke up for you in this situation? Though? Yo, yo, doggy. Yo, doggy, man. You're one of my favorite dudes on the planet, man. That's what I've been, that was my argument all this time. I screamed on everybody. Hmm. Everybody. I said, y'all motherfuckers must don't love him. Everybody around, y'all don't fucking love him. You know what? Because if y'all loved him, y'all would correct him. Hmm. That the most high is going to judge him for what he's doing. Y'all ain't correcting him. Y'all just surround him to see what y'all can, can get from him, right? Y'all don't really love him. Y'all don't really care. I was, oh, yo, I said, I don't understand why nobody ain't speaking up. Everybody who knows the truth. Why y'all ain't speaking up? Why I got people from 5,000, 10,000 miles away speaking up? Hmm. Strangers are speaking up, bro. Because they met me in person and they're like, that's not bad. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling that. Why niggas that grew up with us ain't speaking up? Why ain't nobody? That's the first thing I told Green. Yo, where was my big brother? And this was the day, the morning I came back from Wizard Crip. And they was going at me. I'm like, yo, why are you, where was my big brother? You talking about bringing He didn't want to get in the middle. My office yeah, that day? yeah, yeah. He's like, yo, I don't, I don't want to get in the middle of it, you know. I'm like, yo, you, 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 you supposed to. You the big brother. You was there. You supposed to break that up, bro. You supposed to referee that, bro. When you see your little brothers. And you know what's crazy? I never involved. I never even stepped in the ring, bro. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, what I'm a how, oh, Baz, why you do that? Come on, man. I ain't never wanted to go at my brothers, man. I'm not into that business, bro. I'm into building, not destroying. And if my help wasn't good enough, so be it, man. You might not have been worthy enough. And that's why the scripture says what it said, man. Give not to the sinner, man. Help not an ungodly man, man. Because he's going to give you back twice as wicked as you gave him righteous, man. And, and I say that to say this, man. I understand clearly what Rich Porter went through. You know what I'm saying? You give a nigga 14 bricks, he still shoots you. Mm. Wow. Do you um do you do you feel a little relieved right now that you get to finally speak about it? Cause you've been holding your tongue. Yeah. How many how many years has it been? Yeah, ten years. How you gonna go at me for ten years? I ain't gonna go at nobody for no ten years, bro. <laughs> Not all this shit going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this shit is going on. I gotta help people, man. I gotta help. You know what I'm saying? I gotta hire help. So instead of helping sin, sinners and ungodly niggas on the earth, I'm helping the Most High seal his elect so he can send his son and get us the fuck out of here. Swing a little sweet chariot. Hmm. Let, me, let me ask you something. Um, you said you walked away because something wasn't resonating in your spirit with the music business. What, um, yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about the music business is evil. Uh, it's a lot of occultist stuff. It's a lot of wicked stuff going on in the business. What do you have to say uh -huh. about that? Well, I wasn't, I didn't go that far to see all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I did see, what I did see was all of the niggas that was in it, trying to get in, mm -hmm. they was just cutting each other throat. I just seen wickedness and amongst each, to each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to cut each other throat to get the throat number one spot and all that. That, I didn't resonate with that. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as all of that, going to them parties and all that, I never got to that level. I never even got to that level. But I see it from a distance, and I'm, and I'm looking at it like, wow, the most high, man, thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? He removed me from all of that shit before I even got to that. Mm. Yeah, I didn't see all of that in the, in the early 90s, 93, 94. I didn't see none of that. I wasn't really, listen, I met Rizzo in, in like 93, 92, 93, the end of the night. I only was around routine. Basically, from when I did Diary, it was like October, November, when they first album came. It was a demo. It was it was a white label. If you take your neck and um M E T H O D man. It was a white. It was getting ready to come out as a white label and get start getting promoted. Bam. And then we did Diary that same like that October, the end of October, November. Boom. And then the Wu Tang album came out like. That the, that the next day, or no, the, the, a couple of days later. Hmm. But I say I left. It was green because it's just like like October, no September, August. September. When Grey Digger's album release party, mm -hmm. I left about a month later. Mm 
Mm. That record was number one on Hot 97 for three weeks. I left about right after that. Mm. Right after that. Because when I, when I found out about business wasn't right, I was, I was out. I, me and Rizzo had a talk. We were good. It wasn't no problem. We was good. I'm going to go my way, man. I'm going to do what I got to do, man. So when you, and that's it. So when you see... Just, all you got to do is ask Rizzo, man. Yeah, yeah, ask Rizzo. He's a, <laughs> I might name ask this. Rizzo, ask man. Rizzo. <laughs> yeah, ask anybody want to know what's going on? What, all right, when I got, all right, let me tell you this, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to leave it at this. I'm a, uh, I don't really want to talk about about that situation too much. Mm -hmm. But since we own it and I'm getting it off, I'm going to give it, here you go. All that time he was going at me, right? Mm -hmm. You even, you even checked him for me, doggy. Fast. Like, we even wasn't even tight like that, and you checked him. And niggas that grew up with us, they ain't checked him for me. Yeah, that's I why I salute you, though. And that's why I get on the phone. I do it for anybody but you. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm calling them today, right now. But um, what did I do? I was in Detroit. How did I respond? I put out the fucking other wing at Motown. I did the video. I did that for Razor to push some positive energy in the air. Because I'm thinking the whole time, that's not my partner. He's, he's hurting. He, he's hurting. Nobody, I, I, I got I to gotta send good energy. I don't want to send bad energy. He's hurting. That's not my dude. I don't want to come back at him and go, go gun for gun with him. I don't want to do that. That's my brother. He's not in his right mind to go gun for gun with me anyway. I don't even want to do that, champ. You understand? It ain't no bully shit. It's just I'm fucking, you know... Like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So, hold on. Go ahead. Right. So after the phone call, me and my kids is crying. I couldn't even drive to Connecticut. I had to wait for my sister to come and watch the kids. I said I got to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital. Knee leak, lover. Bless and fucking my cousin freestyle. We went to the hospital. We got to the lobby, Bellevue. Trey Bag and, and Kurt, his big brothers, came downstairs. Right. It was like, yo, we leaving. It was like 12 midnight. Yo, we leaving this shit. We only got two passes. Only two of y'all could go up. I said, yo, Leaky, you coming with me. Me and Leaky Lover went upstairs. When I got upstairs to the fucking, I think it was the 10th floor, his, that's ICU, his wife, Shimmy, collapsed on me. No, bad, yo, please. I said, please, let me go in there and see my brother, yo. And I just went in there. I went in there, me and Leaky. I looked at him. He had tubes. I, he was asleep. I said to him, I said, yo, Razor, man, you my other wing, man. I don't want to do this without you, man. I said, when two or three are gathered in his name, he's also here. I said, your house shot standing with us, too. Leak Lover's right there. You know what he did? He started shaking the bed. Mm. His girl, his sister, oh, shit, yo, Baz got him coming out the coma. He got him moving. He wasn't moving until he hurt me, man. Yo, man. Then, yo, man. My brother cried, man. He let a tear out his left eye, man. I wiped that tear. And I looked it, man. I said, I'm going to go get help, man. And I was crying, and I left, man. I got in the car. We went to Rizzo Crib, man. Three-hour drive, bro. I got there at like 3 in the morning, bro. I rang the bell. Some other dudes answered the door. I forgot his name, but I remember him from way back. I didn't see him in 20 years. It's just, um, um, it's Tanner B video. <laughs> so, we did, Rizzo came down. Fuquan, Rizzo came down. He's like, yo, yo. He showed a look on my face, the tears in my eyes. He's like, yo, you good? I was like, yo, I just left the hospital. I just left Razor. He in the coma. He had an aneurysm. He's like, what? Yo, what? yo. I said, yeah, man. He had an aneurysm at work. He was at work today, and he had an aneurysm. He's like, yo, damn. I said, yo, I just need you to put the album out. We finished it. I need you to put it out so I can help his family, man. I need to get, I need you to put it out so I can help his family. He's like, no, I got you. He didn't even ask to hear the album. He said, I'll get the line right on it. I said, but just wait until my other wing get up, because right now I don't know if he's going to get up or not. I'm, I'm, I'm fucked up. He's like, no, I got you. I got it. I got you. You know, we didn't even record until like 8 in the morning that next day. We just chilled there, sitting there in a, in a, like, in a, like a, 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 a twilight zone. Hmm. I said, like, yo, let's go down to the studio, man. Throw these beats on. He threw some beats on. Yo, I, I said, yo, he seen Freestyle. He didn't see freestyle, so she played my demo, probably. Or a couple of times in Paris after that. But I was like, yo, you know, there's no way I can really pay him back. But could you let him get on the Grave Diggers with us? Freestyle is on the Grave Diggers song with me. And if you hear my verse, I'm breaking up Dog Angels mm -hmm. on the verse. You see? So it's like the next day I went home, and I was like, yeah, I kept calling, calling, calling. And then it's like, yo, I can't, ain't nobody picking up the phones no more. It's just like everybody just flipped. 
I don't know what they did. They just, they just, they just quit. And I was like, what's going on? Because Hazel was still in a coma. Nobody couldn't, he couldn't pick up the phone, but his brother, Kareem, nobody's picking up their phones now. And I need to update, is my brother okay? So I started worrying and thinking that something went wrong. And they ain't answering me because they, they, it's, it's too crazy. Nobody was answering. Finally, I get Kareem on the phone. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Nah, yo, everything is good. Yeah, it's all good. Yo, 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 they blaming you. What? How they blaming me? Yo, man, I don't know, man. Niggas is just talking a lot. Yo, I ain't, yo, I can't. I'm like, I don't even want to hear that, man. I don't even want to hear that. How is that? Where is this coming from? So when you go back to the whole thing, what did I do wrong? It's only one thing I did wrong, bro. Because you can never find nothing else I did wrong. I told you I'm going to help my dudes. I was on a mission, man. And the first song I did when I got with my man, Make sure that die trying. Either I'm going to make it or I'm going to die trying. I took that um, outstanding gap band from my uncle and I recorded over that. Mm. And then when I got the pre, I had him re-record the beat for me. And take your time. Those are the records I was doing because I was on a mission. And I told them I made a vow to the project. I'm going to make it or I'm going to die trying. Way before 50 Cent. Go listen to the audio biography verse on Razor's song that I did. I said, uh, the first song recorded was making a die trying in 91, way before Get Rich and Die Trying. I know what I said. Freaky you know what I said. It's facts. Mm. Right up, no, it's facts. I ain't going at them. I'm just speaking facts. I don't, I don't live my career off of slandering and, and, and publicity stunting. And I'm working, bro. Google me, bro. I got the DVD coming out right now, The Prophet Sees. I'm not slandering people in that. I'm trying to edify the children of Israel. We need help out here, bro. We dying by the... I don't even know if I need to say it. Look around, bro. This yeah, is yeah. crazy what we do. And I told you on the last interview that I did with you, brother, this was coming. I didn't exactly say COVID-19. You did say you didn't even have that conversation yet. Word. And I got goosebumps too. Because I've been saying this from day one. You like, yo, you know that Bible. Yeah. Like, like, yo, you know. And, and the first interview I did, I said it too. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking about the crack babies and the hip more hip hop and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. But the second and the last one I did, we was going in on the, the chip. And, and, and the prophecies and martial law and everything. And then you see all of the troops coming to America. And then you like that fucking, you go back to that interview. And I was saying all of that, bro. Yeah. I was saying all of that. See, that's what I said. That's what I use my time to do. Build. And, and, and try to edify. And try to put out righteous energy. But then every now and then, here come this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the greatest revolutionary that ever walked the earth. Y'all call him Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shah. Yo, you think they loved him? Look what they did to him. They fucked him up. Yeah. The servant is no greater than his master. So I'm going to go through the same thing. That, that means, here's the number one proof that when you got haters, you're doing something right. When they hate your guts, you're doing something right. They hated his guts. They ripped him to pieces, beat him up, killed him. What was he doing wrong? <laughs> All he was doing was helping. That's it. Do you, are you so I, I clearly understand what he went through. I, I get it. But it just, it's just in this time right now. And it's like, damn, like, you know, like, damn, like, like, I read the stories, I understand it, but to go through it, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. It's a, lot crazy. Of, a lot of stuff especially, that's... Especially uh, from brothers you love, you know what I'm saying? And you really want to see the best for them, you know what I'm saying? It's always them, though. <laughs> it's always that them. That shit is sad, bro. It's yeah. sad. It's always them. It's sad. Let, let me ask it's you something. Just, um, some, some of the things that's that's going on right now. Um, you did the last yeah. one, the last interview. You was like, "Yo, is is stuff about to come down the pipeline?" And also, we we oh. we seen the um Millennium Two Thousand. We watched that in '93. We watched a lot of them. We knew yeah. about the RFID yeah. shit. We knew yeah. about a lot of the stuff that, that yeah. was was gonna happen. Um, what do you yeah. do? You know anything about this uh, Adrenochrome thing? Say that again. Adrenochrome, how they 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 uh so called taking the 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 fluid from the the children, like doing wicked stuff to the children, and it, you you know anything about that? Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you something else. <laughs> they doing transhumanism. <laughs> they can down they download your conscience 
<laughs> and put it in another person's body when you die. Mm. They do. They trying to be the most high. That's their synthetic way of reincarnation. <laughs> mm. this, is, this is deep. Like David Rockefeller passed away, they downloaded his conscience. Google it. Mm. They downloaded his conscience. So somebody in that family is walking around with his same idea of the New World Order. What, they, what, they, what, they, what this whole thing is about is the New World Order. They chip everybody and put them in slavery and control their vital signs and control everything. It's in the scriptures, Revelation 13, and that's the new money. That money is about to go digital. And listen, what's happening right now is 5G, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they got a, It's an artificial intelligence society coming in. Okay, all of these cars that drive they sell, all of these trucks that drive they sell, all of these robots the military is practicing with, dogs, ro eye robots, right? All of that and the RFID chip, which is the new money. All of that operates off of 5G. And as a matter of fact, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not ignorant to Satan's devices, but I'm thinking these murder hornets, <laughs> I think those are insect drones with facial recognition, artificial intelligence working off of 5G also. Because all of a sudden, here comes some murder drones. Yeah. I mean, murder um, hornets. And if you look at them, they don't look like real-life things. They look like robots, man. If you really, really look at them hornets, they don't look human. I mean, they don't look like they got regular life in them. They look like, you know, the, the antennas, is, the antenna, the eyes look like cameras. They, they look like a little, little, little stuff. Yeah, they don't look like... Yeah, you know, it's just insect drones. It's really... And I seen a movie. It was an old movie, like, in London. And, and this dude, they were chasing this dude. I think he was a CIA agent. And he, he, he flipped it on him. And it was a, um, was a whistleblower. And then he cut out. And they was chasing him. Right? I seen... They, he was chasing him through the woods. You know, they said insect flies, insect beetles, beavers. It was, you know, you know they got insect monkeys on, on in seven guns. Mm -hmm. They put the insect down on the drone monkey. They put them amongst the monkeys, and they just look at him for a little while, like, what the hell is this? But then they learn to like him, but then the shit fell apart. It, like, it just comped out. I see a, a, a clip. I was like, they then had drone, you know, drone monkeys, drone animals, rodents, all of that. So I think it's hornets, man. It's drones, man. And they operating off of, off of 5G. What up? Oh, what up, boy? How are you? I'm gonna do an interview. We come outside. Yeah, and they doing a um and 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 they had a um they had a a, a drone. Um, I posted it um, um this morning that uh one of the um hornets killed a mouse. Mm. They said that if you got on the um bee bee suit, mm -hmm. the stinger could go through your suit. Wow. And you know, I can stop it. That's not normal, be. That's not normal. These 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 are drones. These this is artificial intelligence, and it all operates under five G. And that's why you see all these five G towers everywhere, because the RFID chip, which is the money that's going to go digital, operates off of five and better. They even got seven G already. Yeah. Okay, so that's why everybody's dropping right now because they're putting up these towers, and what it is is the fucking radiation poisoning your cells, and they call it the corona. But, you know, I already looked up how to get rid of it. Baking soda, man. I need baking soda. Just say it, man. You said baking soda? That's why crackheads, crack, crackheads can lift a car with two fingers, high as shit. <laughs> it's baking soda, man. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Tony. You was in Brooklyn, man. Yo, <laughs> you crackhead, know what I'm Brooklyn, dude? Yo, crackheads. Crackheads. Live forever, too, you know, not see crackheads. You push ups upside down with one finger. Yo, crackheads live forever, too, man. <laughs> it was superheroes. It was the bacon soda, man. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Holy shit. So you boil some water. You know what I'm saying? You boil some water and get the bacon soda. Actually, you boil the water. Take a teaspoon of bacon soda. Put it in a cup. Get some lemons with seeds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to say that. Mm -hmm. And chop it up. Put that in the cup with the baking soda. And then add the water. Mm -hmm. And then let it cool, simmer down to the, to the uh, tolerance level. You could take it. Mm -hmm. And eat the lemon. Eat the seeds. Everything. Mm -hmm. You see? Vitamin B17 is the cure for cancer. Wow. You know that? You know where the vitamin B17 is at? Where? In the seeds of the fruits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why you always spit out the door. Oh, the seeds are nasty and not good for you. 
Now, that was the first the thing. Seeds. Now, the watermelon seeds. Yeah, I eat them. Now, they don't got no seeds. Yeah. Ain't no more seeds. That's the cure for the cancer, man. It's big business, man. You know that. It's mm-hmm. Farmageddon, man. So that's why they got rid of the seeds, because the seeds cure cancer. That's right. That's wow. right. That, that's vitamin B17. Apricot seeds. You know, when you get an apple, uh, what's that? Um, the, uh, what's the, the, the green one? Avocado. With the big seed in the middle? Avocado. Avocado. That, that seed? <laughs> That's the number one B-17, the, the best, the strongest one right there. Mm. You you eat the avocado, and then you chop up that seed and eat that? Mm. Trust me. Trust Crazy. me. But you know they don't want you to see stuff like that. Some like turmeric, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know if I was to title this video that, they would um take this video down. They would like, yo, and you Oh, it's can't. done. It's done. Yeah, they got a campaign going around. If you if you gotta watch how you title stuff, you gotta yeah, give yeah, it all yeah. off. You gotta throw it off. You yeah. already know. Oh, we already. Yeah, we 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 gonna be we ahead of them. We, we you already know. We program the computers. And, the and, 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 and um, Mark Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg yeah. <laughs> he even said he's taking down videos that's anti um um corona. Hmm. Oh, anti vaccine. He's taking those down. Y'all yeah, posted a video last night. Of a dude in London in the hospital, right? Mm-hmm. He was in front of the hospital in England, and he's like, "Yo, people in there, they're giving them the vaccine, and they dropping dead mm. on the spot." Mm. You know, you know what's in that vaccine? That's what they really. That's when the numbers are gonna really go crazy out here. I mean, right. you just gotta Google the Georgia Guidestones, man. You said the what? That's the Ten Commandments of the Illuminati. Georgia Guidestones. Georgia Guidestones. It's like a list of ten. It's a ten. It's like the Ten Commandments of the Illuminati. The first, the first commandment: maintain humanity under five hundred million people. There's mm-hmm. seven and a half billion people on the earth. They got to get rid of seven billion people. How do you think they're gonna do it? Damn. It's already started. That's where we. This is the beginning. Of, this is the beginning of sorrows, man. If the Most High is not with you. You're not going to make it. So my advice to Hellraiser, my little brother who ain't, ain't, ain't in his right spirit, yo, bro, man, repent, man. I just, one word, man, repent, man. Because this is the most high ain't playing right now, man. You don't, you don't even want to piss him off, though. You don't want to piss him off. If he had to right repent now. right now, what, 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 where would he start? Like, so if you had to speak to him right now, you wanted him yo, to. Yo, that, see, I couldn't answer that because. Okay. I mean, I can only answer for what he's doing to me. Gotcha, you understand? Gotcha. Because I wasn't there. Remember, I left. I was only around Wu Tang until that, like, not even a whole year of working. The Diary Madman Diary came out '94 as a white label. Boom. The album, the single came out in '94 in April. Then the album came out in August. Right mm-hmm. after that, it got, it got. That's when the business was funny. So I, I, I did I did what any man would do. I left, mm. and I had to go do what I got to do. So I was not around all of them 13 years before Thug Angels because it was 13 years from when I left to when he came back on the five, and we started with the Thug Angels shit, mm. okay? I wasn't there for all of those years, but I was hearing all kinds of weird, wicked shit was going on. Trust me. And... Wow. When you say so weird, it's like you, you know, weird and wicked on whose part though? Like like if you could give us a little insight. I mean everything in the in, in the business was called wicked. Okay. And then I was hearing you know, I was hearing stuff about niggas stealing money, niggas doing all kinds of wicked shit. Like it was just niggas using drugs. It was just turning people into something else. Mm-hmm. That business was turning it was actually probably bringing out who you really was and you had a platform and access to all of that shit. And it, it looked it cool, and you was feeling good at the time, but it, it ain't do no good for nobody, bro. Mm. So, you know, I was hearing shit, because I always had, you know, I was checking in, like, yo, how my niggas is doing? Because I ain't hear from nobody. Nobody was calling me back, yo, Baz, we got this project we doing, yo, you gonna get a verse on it, or, yo, we doing this tour, yo, here, get on this tour with us, or I wasn't getting nothing, no, for no favors in return, but I wasn't mad. That's not, I'm not here complaining. Mm. I was just happy that my niggas was not in Red Hook bagging up and, 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 and blowing up guns. That's all I cared about. I didn't want them. I didn't want them to go that route. That's why I, I was always building with the young brothers, man. I didn't want them to go that route. 
I want it, but I want it better for them, and I show it greater for them. You know what I'm saying? Whether they show it in themselves or not, I made sure that I, I, they seen it. You know, and I play, I pro provided a platform for them to see and manifest it. That's why when me and Priest was doing our album, I had Razor with me. He had Prodigal Son with him because they was there when I got there. They ain't wasn't in no Red Hook. They came to Red Hook with me after Diary was already out. They was coming to Red Hook with me. I got pictures of them at my family events. Peace and Prodigal. They was with me all the time. After Diary was out, we was, we was up and running. And there's a lot of, you know, it's just a lot of bad energy out there. Hold up, so you that I don't agree with. I don't Priest deserve that. Yes, kill a priest, I'll tell you. Wow. I'm going to tell you how it went. When I did Diary of a Madman, uh -huh. I went downtown. Remember Super B Street? Yes, yes, yes. I went to Super B, yep, downtown near the mall. I went to Super B Street to buy the Wu Chang 36 Chambers album. It just had really just, just dropped. So I went down there to get it, and Priest and Dreddy, Dreddy Kruger, threw us down there in the store. I was like, oh shit, what, yo, I was, yo, what y'all doing here? He's like, yeah, we just was buying a Wu Chang. I was like, yo, I'm coming to get mine. I went and got it. We came upstairs. I was like, yo, I did this shit with Wizard in them. <clears throat> you got to hear this shit. Because right then and there, me and Priest already became partners. Mm -hmm. We was the disciples of Armageddon, DOA. We was a two man group. So I was like, yo, you got to get on this shit. So this is what happened. I played it, nigga lost it. Brought him to the studio that night. I brought him and Dreddy to Red Hook with me because they was like, yo, fuck it, we just gonna hang with you till it's go to studio time. We went to Red Hook, boom, went to my crib real quick, came out, hung out, drunk a few 40s, and then we went to the studio, Firehouse. And um, um, Prince Paul was there. Wow. He was like, yo, I played, yo, he said, yo, everybody wanna sign you, you know that? I was like, nah. He's like, what's they ain't tell you yet? He was like, nah. He said, all right, I'll let him tell you. He's like, yo, everybody, Warner, he said, yo, Madonna even want to sign you, Warner Brothers, higher records. I was like, wow. He's like, I'm going to let Reza tell you, though. He said, we played it for niggas, everybody wants you. Mm. Right? So now, I brought Priest in there. I was like, yo, let Priest get on this. So everybody was with it. Reza, was, he, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't come yet because he left and he had to come back. Great niggas had to go do an interview. So when he got back, he heard Priest on it. Priest went second after me. Nah, because the night that I did it, when I got to the studio the first night, mm -hmm. when I did the song, they shut the session down after I laid that verse, and they went home to write. Mm -hmm. Everybody took the instrumental and my verse, so that they, didn't, they didn't record it right then and there that same night. Mm -hmm. So when I brought Preach in, it was before they recorded, the next day. Mm -hmm. They didn't record their verse. So Preach got on it, but Rizzo was like, nah, he can't be on it. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it at the time, but I get it now. He, he was like, nah, he can't be on it. So we had a vote, and we all agreed that Priest be on it. And Rizzo was like, all right, I got to go second, though. I got to go after the guard. So Rizzo didn't, that's want, went. He didn't want Priest on Diary of a Madman. No, wow. but I'm going to tell you why. It wasn't that he was whack. It ain't got nothing to do with Priest's ability. He's incredible. Mm -hmm. It was because he was already signed to Jizza Entertainment. Oh. I understood it after... After I seen what was really going on, because remember, it was just the beginning for me. So I didn't look, I, I didn't know that I was like making it look like, like I was, he was already signed and had a, a, um, a launch um, idea already, I guess, with Jizza gotcha. on coming out on his album. Mm. I was I was coming through Rizza. Rizza was signing me. Mm. Jizza already signed Priest. When I got there, Priest was already signed. So Rizza, well, I was his artist come, coming through him. So, me and Priest became partners because when we was freestyling, we was like fucking twin brothers. Like, what the, yo, we got to do a project. Yeah. Bomb. So I'm thinking, let me get my nigga on this project. He's incredible. I know he going to get on it. He going to do, um, he going to do a, a dope verse. But it was a business conflict. I didn't know. That's gotcha. what it was. So, but, but then I guess, you know, Jizza and, and Rizzo must have spoke about it. Like, all right, we're going to set up. Because Rizzo was like, yo, I want to get you on this very digger shit to uh, set up your fan base. So when we do your album, boom, you got a fan, you got a fan base to, to already. So I was thinking the same thing about Killer Priest. But they, I didn't know that they had a plan for him already. Gotcha. I didn't know that. Got you. That's all it was. It so, wasn't no disrespect or no yeah, funny yeah, shit. Yeah. It was just a, a, it was a me not knowing and try, trying to help. <laughs> Just helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My helping ass. <laughs>
<laughs> so so let me let me ask you a question. Well, Killer Priest, let me memos of Killer Priest. You owe me an interview, bro. So it is what it is. I'm gonna have a Killer Priest interview. Priest, you owe me that. We you have to. everything. Yeah. So um okay. the, the next thing, Jay Electronica uh dropped the album with Jay Z recently. And people always uh -huh. say he sound like Killer Priest. Does he sound like Killer Priest? And look like him too. He looked like him to me too. <laughs> wow. Wait, is that a I good remember thing? you did an interview. You was like one of the first ones. I watched that interview when you put it out way back. Mm -hmm. He was on the terrace in, in Miami somewhere, I think, Florida. No, that was that was think, actually a live stream of him. And I didn't do the interview. That was just him oh. on the live stream. And he was talking, oh. so yeah, cause cause he oh. how he used to do he used to do like live streams, and you never see it again. So I was like, oh no no no, this gotta right. go to the world. This gotta right, go to cause the world. I seen that, I, yeah. but I seen it when you put it up though. That's, I didn't yeah, see I'm it live. It. It. I'm the only one who have it. Right, so I thought I thought it was something you yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying did. You just was looking out and how you put it so we could see it. Yeah. But yeah, when I seen it, it was on I think Forbes. It was the green. The, yes, yeah, it was, yes. I think, Forbes DVD. No, no, actually, it was, it was yeah. actually a Doggy Diamonds TV. That was like one of my early... Doggy okay, Diamonds okay. Dog, yeah. Doggy. It, was one, it was one of the TVs, right? Yeah. Yep. So, boom. I seen it. I was like, yo, this dude reminded me a priest. Yeah. But then I heard, like, people were telling me, like, yo, he said something in one of his, um, I think, blogs or talks. He was saying something about, like, when he used to be in New Orleans, he used to be banging Sons of Man, and he, 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 he fucked with niggas. So... Mm -hmm. I kind of seen the similarities in his in his uh his his his, quote, his vocals mm -hmm. in the beginning when he first came out with us I think it was one song he came out with and it, and it just reminded me of Priest a little bit I don't know it just reminded me mm -hmm. but I didn't run around saying he sounded like Priest and all that it just I I seen when people said it I I, I seen where they were seeing it from got you got you did you did you hear the Jay Z and uh, I like him I like him I, like I think it's cool but I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know him. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Personally, I don't really know his background. I don't know all his music. I didn't even hear the album with him and Jay. Okay. But I heard he was talking about the synagogue of Satan and all the stuff we be talking about. Oh, so no, he was dropping I'm it. like, hey. Yeah, I'm like, yo, listen. That, that's what the knowledge is for. Ain't nothing new under the sun. It's, we, we bumped into the knowledge. Every, we got to share it and let everybody else bump into it, too. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's not holding it to yourself and trying to get rich off of it. No. You don't make merchandise of the Lord or the Lord's word. You you buy the truth and sell it not. You give it out for free. Mm. That's why I be on Facebook giving it out for free. Yeah. Yeah, you know that. That's it. You, you don't know. even see me promoting my you don't even see me promoting videos. Yeah. You know, I'll just promote like one of your fourth album is coming out, the algorithm. You know what I'm saying? I thought my um snippet of the um my trailer of the Prophet Sees DVD coming soon. I throw up, you know what I'm saying, the, the the gold bars, the cassette that I wanted to make for my brothers in jail, because they say, yo, we ain't got no more CDs in here. We need a cassette. So I said, yo, I'm gonna put all of the classics on there and, and give y'all that. See how it go. Then I'm gonna do a real cassette, a new one. You know what I'm saying? I'm holding that new music. I'm hiding. I gotta hide it. Niggas be scaling, as you know this game. <laughs> you got to be quiet and just, you know. Yeah. But at the, at the same time, my, my main responsibility all this time is to just feed, man. Feed, he said feed my lambs, man. That's what I'm doing, man, because I'm trying to make it myself. Don't think I'm doing it only for y'all. I'm doing it for myself to save my own soul, too. He said if, you, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the watcher sees the, um, the, um, the wolf coming and he bloweth not his trumpet, to warn them, then if they die, that that blood on is on your hands. He's gonna require their blood on your hands. You gotta you gotta pay for their blood because you didn't warn them. So that that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I, I, it's more things to be building about out here than to just be coming at me, bro. Yeah, yeah. attacking me, bro. I want to say ten years. Come on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Come I on, bro. I ain't even giving you a reason to come. Keep coming. I ain't even attacking. But when you know, when I saw the diss songs and then his son dissing me and all of that, I had to defend myself real quick. That's why I did the song with um Nine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nine. I did that verse for these dudes in, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And it would happen to be a Nine album. They was re re, re uh, remixing. So when I wrote, I, I did that verse off the top because I was just tired of just like sitting there looking like a sucker. This nigga keep dissing me, doing songs, his son, and they talking shit from guys. And I'm like, yo. Damn, this is serious now. So I had to do a verse real quick and did it in a hip hop way. But then I heard an interview, you know what I'm saying, on some barbershop show interview, 
and he, the guy saying, um, the interviewer is, is, is riding with it, putting words in his mouth. Like, yeah, I heard that song with Nine, and he was taking shots at RZA, and RZA's like, you see, that's why I, I had to bring it out in the DVD. Yo, I, listen to the verse, man. Everybody listen to the verse with Baz and Nine Creature and Baz. Tell me where I shot at RZA. I ain't never had to shoot at RZA on that song. He had nothing to do with it. That was personal, me and Razor, because he kept shooting at me. And he was doing it online. He was doing it in interviews. He was doing it on songs. And I didn't deserve none of it because I did nothing wrong but help my little brother. That's it. I want the best for him. I always did. And that's it. I just hope he heal up and do what I told him. You got to start with the most high. You got to heal your spirit first. Get your spirit right. And then you get your mind right. And then your physical will come back and be right, man. You... You ain't do you ain't doing it, bro. You you got a lot of negative energy and you gotta get rid of that, bro. You gotta get rid of that, bro. You know I didn't do nothing to you, bro. You know that. You you know what's funny, doggy? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm gonna end it with this. About that. How I'm the last person to find out he had a problem with me, and I gotta find out online. Why well, you couldn't call me like a man and, and mano imano this, man? In the beginning, if this was the case, bro. I, I never got a phone call. I never got a sit down. You know who was going to make us sit down in the same room? Klein. Mm. Klein. This when we was doing the Klein Syndicate. Where he's calling him, calling him, calling him, calling him. It's like everywhere I'm working, he's calling and calling, trying to poison shit. I don't get it. All you got to do is join us. We wanted to work. We wanted to get get you down with the shit. I had music I wanted to put on there. I was, I was still going to look out. This shit don't make sense, doggy. Like, my heart is pure. I sleep Gucci at night, bro. Mm-hmm. I ain't worried about my judgment coming. Everything I put out is going to come back, and I'm good. I ain't worried about no corona. I ain't worried about none of this. Because if you do something wrong to the Lord, that's when you in danger, and you should be scared of what's coming back. Mm-hmm. All I put out is good energy, positive vibrations, help a lot of people, just you know, to try to bring them closer to the most high. Because I know the times that we in, and I know that's the only solution that's going to, you know, get you oh, um, to, to, just, to um, escape all of the dangers that we're facing. It's only one way out, man. It's the most high. Going at Baz is not going to get you on a chariot. Going at Baz is not going to get you to, to, to escape Corona. Going at Baz is not going to get you to escape martial law. Yo, man. Mm. Got to get right, man. Got to get right. And the people around around me, if they, don't, if, they, if they ain't adding on and building with me like that, I don't want you around me. If you ain't trying to show me or encourage me how to get on one of these chariots and how to escape all this crazy shit that's happening, yo, we don't really need to be building right now, bro. You talking about destroying niggas and taking niggas down. I don't want to be around that energy. I'm, I've been gone with that. I don't want nothing to do with that. No. I'm 13 years into this book like I am. You know, you know I ain't got no time to be going at nobody. I'm yeah. going at Esau. <laughs> Yo, Baz, you know that. what's crazy? You know what's crazy, Baz? Because a lot of people, as you've seen and you know, attack me. A lot of people make videos and say stuff about me on Instagram. Y'all don't be responding, dudes, because I don't have no time for that. Yeah. My fight is bigger than. I don't that. either, Yo, Yo, doggy. I don't got no. I don't got no time for that. I got right. four daughters. I, I got to make sure I can't raise them from no visiting room, Daddy. Love you. Pick up the phone. Touch yeah, the glass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't do, it's hard enough raising them and, and I'm with them. Yeah. In, in, in their life, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I got other shit to worry about. And then we got this Corona shit, you know what I'm saying? We got these troops waiting. We got the White Panthers <laughs> stirring, up the, stirring up the race riots. They just, they, my man just told me they killed a dude in Atlanta today. Mm-hmm. They, 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 not, not today, but they uploaded the video where this black dude was jogging and the white dude and his son, well, they had a shotgun and a mag and they blew his brains out. Hmm. And they beat it. So today they put out the video, and it, and it had to be, and it happens to be an assistant DA who was the gunman, a, 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 a retired assistant DA who did the blow, the blow, the brain blowing out. So they beat it. So now the people are stirred up and mad. You know how? You know it's just injustice. But then and I say that before the justice hey, system is here to put all the acquittal. Let me tell you why <laughs> me and you are so connected. I was just about to say, could you say that line for me? Could you? I was just about to say that to you. Could you say the line why all of this is happening? You said this in Death Peter Penalty. I always tell people this is one of my favorite songs because it's so prophetic. Yeah, and, and I love historical. you for that, doggy. Because you be 
you 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 told me that. Yo. People say that when they're in front of you, but you say that when I ain't around. Yo, I say, that's I, what I, I know. My real. favorite song. I, I, that's what. This is part of my workout. That's part of my workout routine. Yeah, so. man. yeah, so, man. But it's say the inspirational line. song. Say the line. Uh-huh. The justice system is his. The court are only acquit him, and eighty five percent of y'all are going to hell with him. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, definitely. and I can take it to the scriptures. That's Zechariah eleven and five. Mm-hmm. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Mm. It's written, bro. Right. And I didn't even know that scripture when I did death be the penalty. But it matches up. And look outside and look at all of these cases. It matches up. It's real life. That's all I'm trying to focus on. I'm just trying to prepare y'all for what we up against and, 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 and shine some light on how to survive it. Mm. And it's only one way. And it's, I'm not here to go at my brothers. I could have been did a hundred albums going at Razor. For what? For what? I love Razor, man. That was my little brother. Nobody gave me time to even mourn my partner, my brother. Everybody just stoned me, just shot arrows at me, trying to pierce me. Just didn't even want to even hit. You know, a lot of people ain't even want to hit. They ain't even call me to check my side of the story or nothing. Mm-hmm. They just lying. That's, I'm glad it happened like that. Because yeah, yeah, it yeah. just showed me who's fucking with me and who's not. So that's why another reason I ain't respond. I just wanted to see who was going to step up in my defense. Because a real friend will defend you in your absence. Mm-hmm. And I ain't seen none of them do that. So that just let me re-evaluate my circle and just do what I do. Mm. That's um, it. I'm just we, working, bro. Before we go, I just want to ask you one thing. Um, a prof- Another prophetic book, I'm pretty sure you read it. Behold the Pale Horse. You read that book? Oh, <laughs> William Cooper. Could, could Come you, on, man. Could you tell people that Come everything on, that he wrote? That dude, <laughs> yeah, that dude, he was an insider, correct, and blew the whistle, but he... Was on point with everything, everything, everything. That's because he is a plan. It's it's a pandemic. <laughs> mm. That's the new word. Yeah. It's a pandemic. It's a plan, yeah. man. It's a plan behind the plan behind the plan. Why do you think? Come on. Why the troops came? Why did they bring a million troops? And 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 you don't. And they say you saw them that day, like everywhere. Like niggas was like, yo, what the fuck? You saw the military everywhere. Where they at now? Yeah. Where they at? They in the cut. In the cut. They in the cut. You need to jump off. You need, the, you, need, you, need, you need the chaos for them to come and bring the order. Mm. That's it. And the chaos is building up. I'm going to tell you how it's going to build up. <laughs> and you're going to see this real soon. Here we go again. It's going to be like, like right now, the famine is coming next. It's famine. Mm. Okay? If you need Matthew 24 and 7, it tells you the list. Bing, 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 bing. Right? And the next thing on the list after the pestilence and the earthquakes is, is famine. It was, it was famine, earthquakes, and, and uh, famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. So the famine, don't forget that part. It said the wars, the rumors of war. You hear them beefing, trying to talk about going to war with America. Kim Jong-ping, Ong-poon, whatever his name is, want to fucking shoot missiles on America. Those are rumors of war. But then again, you go to Iraq and you go to Afghanistan, you see wars. Syria, they getting bombed, they dropping bombs. There's wars and rumors of wars. Okay? Now, the pestilence is here. Corona. That's, pestilence means diseases. That's it. Now they got another second string of corona now. Get, get coming now with these hornets. No. Now. And explain to them what famine is. Go to the supermarkets. Yeah. Famine is hunger. A, mm. a, a lack of food. A lack of bread. Okay? When you go when you go to these shelves in the stores, even that's in the scriptures. It said the storehouses, the shelves shall be empty. It's in the Bible. It's in the Apocrypha. Okay? I can read these scriptures right. I can read them. So here's the, here's the thing. They just told all of the farmers in America to you all of their livestock. So they got to kill all of their um, cows, chickens, pigs, whatever it is. All of the food, they got to kill it. And all of the crops, they got to destroy it. Because it's poison and because of coronavirus. Mm. Now, let's go, let's go back. Let's, let's do the, the spiritual dominoes effect, right? The farmers, all right. Now, when you go to the shelves and they're empty, because I was in the store the other day, Friday, right? And I was telling the guy, I was like, I'm going to tell you why your shelves are empty. He said, talk to me, bro, because I always break it down to him. And he like, you ain't never lied. I said, no, nah, it's the book. I said, you know why it's empty? Because when you go to re-up, 
they empty. He said, yep. I said, and you know where they get it from? The truckers. They don't got nothing to bring them. Mm. I said, and you know where the truckers get it from? The docks. The docks ain't bringing nothing in to the trucks because they turn all the ships around because everything is made in China. They turn it around. Mm. Okay? So now there's a fucking lack of food. That's why right now, when you go to the store, it, it became, remember in the beginning, niggas was grabbing 3,000 ro to rolls of toilet paper, <laughs> 50 <laughs> rolls, 100 yeah, yeah. boxes of this. Now they rationed it out. You only could buy two of this per yeah, family, yeah. two pieces of meat. Mm. One thing of this, one. You know why? Because it's all, after the rationing, it comes to famine. There's not enough. Mm. There's not enough no more. It's emptying out now. Ain't nothing coming in to restock those shelves. So it's emptying out. We're at the beginning of the famine because they told, now when the ships wasn't coming in, when they was turning, yo, it was like my man from um, um, LBC called me. My Mexican dude, he's like, yo, Bash, man, you white, man. Yo, that scripture's right in my face. He's like, yo, I'm at, he work at the docks. He's like, yo. I said, yo, the truckers ain't going to have nothing to pick up. They're just going to be sitting here. He's like, yo, he called me one day. He's like, yo, they sitting here. They turn it around. They going home. They don't got no work. Mm. He said, all of the ships been turned around. They all lined up in the ocean, turning around. Because everything is made in China. Yo, you right. And since this corona, they don't want none of that product. And this is the world bad. The whole world bad China's products. Mm. So a lot of people was going through the same thing. But now, they told, when, we, when, when they turned around the ships, now you got the farmers. That's the last hope for us to eat. But we got to wait. Because when you till the land, you got to wait for it to grow and then pick it up and then send it to the stores. So it's seasonal. But now they told them to euthanize everything. So there's nothing coming in from the farms neither. So whatever's in the storehouses is it. Mm. And once that runs out, what's going to happen? That's this other scripture now. That's second as just 15 and 16. Then, no, 18. It says um, how... Um, a man shall have no pity on his neighbor, and shall shall rifle his house with with the with the sword, and spoil all his goods. Mm. That's home invasion, man. That's when these masks and gloves turn black, baby. Mm. For the lack of bread and the great tribulation, niggas gonna be when we hungry, we be thieving. I said it in the song. It's not. It's just facts. It's just facts. It's going to be hung. Niggas going to be looking, smelling niggas' doors, smelling by your window. Yo, I'm going there, nigga. He got food in it. It's going to get like that. Damn. It's going to get like that. They ain't going to have no pity. I grew up with Miss Johnson and yeah, David Johnson and all. Fuck them niggas. I got to eat. The I ain't eating two weeks. The it's hunger games. The hunger games. This is when your friend going to start looking like a hamburger in a plant. <laughs> Cartoon <Damn>. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bugs, what was that, Bugs Bunny? I think, yeah, that was Bugs. I think it was Woody Woodpecker. They Woody fucked me Woody up that when I was a kid. They, I never forgot that. Yeah, and Woody here Woody. it is. Yeah. Here it is. That's about to be reality out here. Wow. So you know, it's like I'm more in. I'm more into you know, what I'm saying trying to build and, and figure all of that out and let y'all know what's coming. Mm -hmm. and, and and my brothers alongside me are supposed to be doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. We, 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 we signed up for this. Mm -hmm. What's going on, bro? What's really going on, bro? Come on, man. Help your children of Israel, man. Bring some people to the Lord, man. A man shall be known by his fruit, man. A tree shall be known by his fruit, man. You know? Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to help the Lord right now because I helped everybody and they gave me their ass for chance. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not starving. I'm still going. I'm still working. I can survive without niggas because I already know what I got to do. And I'm pure. And there's a lot of niggas who love me to death all over the planet because I did great work, beautiful, professional, righteous work with them. And they just love me. Like, yo, I'll do anything for you, my nigga. Like, you got fans that turn CEO, fans that turn beat maker. Yo, I want to pay you for a collab. Let's do, I just want to hear bads on my album, on my beats. I'll pay you. Like, it just turned, yo, you're a great dude. Yo, every, yo, every time I go to Europe, these niggas is telling me, yo, right after you left, I took, Rizzo came and did a show. I told Rizzo, yo, Baz was just here, son. That nigga is crazy. He's like, yo, the God is crazy, right? Yo, I love the God. It's always love, even though I don't see my brothers. I said, I love my brothers, man. I'm grateful for what he did for me. I'm, I'm, it didn't go right. It's cool. We still come together every now and then when, when he, you know, when he, when he got something he needed me to do. I'm there. It's my brother, regardless. He's like my pops in the game. He gave me fucking life in the hip-hop. 
you think I'm a bitch? It shaped it. The, the, um, I'm going to die father and mother, man. He's like my hip-hop pops. And, and you know, the elders and the apostles is like my spiritual pops. Mm. And then you got your cardinal, your physical moms and pops. I'm not going to dish none of that. And their days will be longer on the earth. I'm grateful for what RZA did. I'm super grateful for what my cousin preached out there when he played that demo. That's why I took him everywhere with me like he said I would. Because mm. he know I trust him and he trusts me. I love him. He know my heart. He know I'm going to do the same thing he's going to do. I would have played his demo if I got turned down. So for the... Um, you know, you know what Yeah, no, like, one, yo, one billion. So for it's just people, about being righteous and being pure, man. That's it, man. So that's the, the only people, thing that's going to get you so proud, people man. people who, who, who haven't heard from you in a while, probably wonder where you at. They might be under a rock. Where could they um follow you, see you, and stay in contact with you right now on social media? Because I'm just getting involved with the uh Instagram thing. I just did it in, in, the, in the summer when I was going to Europe. My man Biko, DJ Biko, I like Rico. My man from Switzerland and shit, my, my um, Swiss DJ, mm -hmm. he convinced me, like, yo, you need to get on there. Everybody looking for you. Mm -hmm. So Instagram, Shabazz the Disciple mm -hmm. 1 on Instagram. And um, Twitter, Shabazz Disciple mm -hmm. without the, because there wasn't enough characters. I mean, there was too many characters mm -hmm. on Twitter. Uh, Shabazz the Disciple on Facebook. Mm -hmm. David Collins on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I got a new website for the uh, DVD, and it's still uh, being put together. The mm -hmm. Prophet Seeds. Like, the prophecies mm -hmm. that's happening out here, mm -hmm. I just said the Prophet Seeds. But I just, you know, gave it another meaning real quick. Mm-hmm. Because okay. uh, the prophet is the one with the eyes, with the sound in his eyes, who can see it all coming before it happens and mm -hmm. warn y'all. You know what I'm saying? You got to check this out, right? Mm -hmm. I want y'all to also, you know, because I know y'all like, yo, what happened in the class syndicate? We still working. Okay. Just gotta get, it's just quiet shopping time. You gotta, it's processes. It's okay. a filming time where you're gonna see us out there, then it's quiet time. So you go, you go, you got um, free productions. Free, um, that's class shit. So you can go in there and find updates on, on the class syndicate. P-R-E-E, -E, Productions. And then he's the BK Don also. You know what I'm saying? That's my brother, man. He's trying to help him. You know what I'm saying? He's changing his life, and I'm there to help. You know what I'm saying? I give him my all. Because when, when I was in that transitional moment to want to change and do something great, he brought me to the radio and, and believed in me. So I'm just returning the favor to Big Bro, man. That's it. Got you. So, um, yeah, we, we going out with this one. Um, Hopefully, a lot of the fans and the people who wanted to know, now they get to hear your side, get to hear, you know. Yeah, man. Um, and it's like, you know, I could go on and on and on, but the bottom line is, man, just repent, man, and get right with the Lord. You see what's going on out here, man. It's just serious. The Most High is laying everybody down, bro. He laying brothers down. They dropping, bro. You don't want to piss him off. And I'm one of his soldiers out here, ten toes down, boots on the ground for the Lord right now. You don't want to go at me, bro, for nothing. You you ain't got no real reason to be doing that. Get it? Get over that. Call me. Build me like a man, man, like a little brother. And let's build, bro. You know I was always right there waiting to build. But if you want to keep going with that, go ahead, man. Good luck. Wish you well. Do what you got to do, bro. I'm 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 on a different mission. I'm trying to get on a chariot. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to escape all these plagues and all this pestilence and all this death and destruction, man. I'm Psalms ninety one in it, man. Psalms ninety one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, I do need you to um. You got to send me them scriptures so I know because it been me and you built offline about that. So you said you had. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Uh -huh. I got them pulled. I got them pulled up waiting for you on my on my own computer right now. I will give you it right now. Okay, yeah, let, let me... I yeah. already had the tabs up. Yeah, I had dope. the tabs up. Dope, dope. Yeah, I, I definitely right. need... I when, you, when, we, when, we, when I was waiting for you to call me back, I had the tabs. I had a couple of tabs up. But the... um, Hold on. I got to re-sign on. All right. Boom. The one you looking for is right here. It's Ecclesiastes. It's Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. Right? It's chapter 25, 26... Verse 23. I'm going to read it for you. Go ahead. A wicked woman, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Mm. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. So if you got a wicked woman, yo, man, you need to check your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we don't got a lot of good choices out here, but I mean, if you just got a demon, straight scorpion, you need to check your spirit, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? There's some women and sisters out there that are trying. We call them aqua, because that's um, sisters in the Hebrew, and they are trying, you know, like Sarah, you know what I'm saying, Rahab. You know, it's, 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 it's like Rahab was the was the harlot, you know what I'm saying? And the most high was like, yo, the, 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 the prostitute are naked before some of y'all wicked ass niggas. And she, she, she repented and she made it, you know what I'm saying? She was forgiven for her order, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's just about repenting, man. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't do the unforgivable sins, you can you can make it. You can still make it. You just got to start somewhere, bro. And somebody around you got to encourage that. And that's why I don't understand who he got around him. I don't get it, man. They, it's not the right people, bro. It's not. Because he's off. His energy is off. That's not my little brother, man. That's why I don't got nothing else to really say to him, man. Yeah. I can't. He ain't going to hear from me until my man show up, bro. My little, when I hear my little brother, I know it when I hear my little brother. Because he ain't going to come at me like this, man. After all I did for him, man, and it, before and after and during, there's no way in the world I deserve this. You know what I'm saying? And he know that. Mano y mano, he knows that. He knows that. Personally, he knows that. He knows everything I did. His family know that. Every time. When I when he was in, when I didn't see him, they come into my uncle's funeral. I seen his family. You know what I'm saying? When I be going out there. And I always ask, yo, yo, how's he doing? And they, yo, yo, he's all right. So, little personal stuff like that, he don't know about maybe, or maybe they did tell him. They know, man. They know. They know. You know, I'm not the one you could point the fingers at. I'm not the most high. I can't give nobody no aneurysm. I, I mean, I got a list of niggas that I would love to give that if I had that power. <laughs> and you was not on that list, my brother. You wasn't on that list, man. You would have never been on that list. If I wanted something bad, put it like this, man, I'd have left you in Red Hook to die, man. Mm. Yo, I don't even know what else to say to that. Yo, Shabazz, man, I'm going to thank you for um taking this phone call. Uh, for doing this you already know once again so, yeah, um, yo, I respect you yeah. man I got goosebumps the whole time yeah, man yeah, cause yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I respect in my spirit and you've been like the, like one of the main dudes through this whole process of this 10 years I've been going through this you've been there with me bro and we even grow up together it's some Brooklyn yeah. shit for real like yeah, 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 you yeah. like an OG looking at like nah I ain't going through that guy. I don't want to see that Cointel Pro I don't want to see that that, that Willie Lynch I don't want to see that yeah, Not never, with you brothers that I never respect. liked it. And we could have brought so much more to the table for everybody, wisdom-wise. You know what I'm saying? I met y'all together. I met y'all together. Yeah, I man. never wanted to make a yeah, choice man. between y'all, but it was just like, yo, yeah, I, don't, I don't like yeah, what's man. happening. I don't yeah, like man. You, how you, nobody ever asked your best how you feel about all of this. Going, nobody checked on that. Mm -hmm. Nobody checked on me to see how I felt losing my partner, my brother, bro. Nobody even gave me a time to mourn losing my brother, bro. They just kept, they just start stoning and flying arrows, bro. But it's all right, though. I survived all of that. And I'm just hanging out for the Lord because it said don't help everybody like that no more. Help the, I'm helping the Lord. I'm helping the, I'm trying to bring people to the Lord. Because Daniel 12 and 3 says, those who bring people, to, men to the Lord, those are the real stars. Hmm. I ain't trying to get a star on a Hollywood floor. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to bring people to the Lord, man. That's the real stuff. It is what it is. So, yo, man, thank you. Um, We got to handle that other business. We, well, I'm not going to say it on here, but um, the other interviews that you setting up for me, I will let them know once it's yeah. done. But, um, yeah, we gonna, no doubt. We going to get a lot of that stuff in there. So, yo, I think. No doubt. You let me know because he's on that. He, he just, uh, he just, he waiting by the phone. Yep. Right. He wait. He'll he pick up right away. Yep. So we gonna make right that happen. I'm gonna call him right after I finish and let him know I just finished mine and his is coming. So he'll get on. He'll get the, in the mindset of um, you know, just 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 reflecting and just going back. It is what it is. All right. So yo, thank you. I'll build yeah. you later on. Peace. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you, man. Peace. All right. So yeah, y'all. That was Shabazz the disciple. Uh, one of my favorite MCs made a song that I absolutely love. So um. I really, really play the song like every day. Um, Death be the penalty. Um, the video is so ill too. It's just you know, it's, like I said, the the song spoke to me when I first heard it. I heard the song a long time ago, maybe like '96 or something like that. And um, the song just stuck with me, and I just always play it. My man Trike, we love that. We love the song. We love the video. Everything. So just knowing somebody who did something that I liked is always dope. And um, it is what it is. So this is Doggy Diamonds No Filter. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you like, 
share, you subscribe to this on iTunes. If you're listening to this on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube, hit the bell for all notifications when I upload new content. If you're listening to this on iTunes, make sure you leave me a comment, a rating. If you listen to this on Spotify, make sure you subscribe. Uh, if you if you're watching the playback or whatever the case may be on again on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, thumbs up the video. Uh, I need all the support I could get. And um, I'm just trying to bring y'all good content. I got a lot of content to drop, but um, y'all got to want it. You know, I ain't just going to force nothing on y'all. Y'all got to want it. So it is what it is. I'm Doggy Diamonds. I'm out of here. Till next time. <laughs>